What's up guys and welcome to a budget standard deck tech video. With standard being overrun with cards like Hydroid Crisis and Arclight Phoenix, which frankly cost an arm and a leg just to get your hands on, is there a way to play standard competitively without breaking the bank? Thankfully there is with Goblin Calamity. While most competitive decks we see right now are upwards of three to four hundred dollars, this entire deck can be bought on Card Kingdom right now for only fifty dollars. Not only that, but I also believe this has a high enough power level that you can comfortably take this to your local FNM and still post pretty good results. Let's jump in and see what the deck is actually trying to do. As the name suggests, this is a mono red goblins build focused on winning as fast as possible with a swarm of low cost goblins. Normally decks like this fizzle out fairly quickly due to a lack of late game presence, however this one stands out a bit from the rest thanks to a few specific cards which we will talk about a bit later. First let's jump into the creature package since this will be our main way to win with this deck. We have 4 Fanatical Firebrand, 4 Skirk Prospector, 4 Goblin Instigator, 4 Legion Warboss, and 3 Siege Gang Commander. Fanatical Firebrand and Skirk Prospector are obvious turn 1 plays in a goblin deck for standard. The Firebrand is perfect for poking in a few points of damage early game since it can swing right away. It also has the added bonus of being able to sacrifice itself to trade with an opponent's Lanoir Elf, or just hit the opponent for a point of damage if there is nothing left for him to do on board. Skirk Prospector is also a key early game play as he can help you ramp out some of your big payoff goblins a turn or two early. Being able to sacrifice goblins that are outpowered on board to play much more powerful cards will help you stay in the race rather than fizzling out against an opponent with stronger creatures. This also provides a great way of flooding the board with a bunch of goblins to sure up a game if need be. Of course if you plan to do that be careful as wrath effects are ever present in standard and can very easily blow you out of a game if you go too all in. At 2 mana we have Goblin Instigator, another easy include as it's basically 2 goblins for the price of 1. Again, you are trying to shore up the game as quickly as possible, so spitting out extra creatures and going wide is really perfect for this deck. Of course there are only 1-1 one, one goblins, but that really doesn't matter too much as you are just trying to get as many goblins as you can as quickly as possible. Legion Warboss is a highly aggressive card that not only spits out extra tokens for you, but also provides a way to buff them up. The Mentor mechanic can be a bit slow against other creature decks, but with so many goblin tokens sitting around, it's nice to be able to buff them for extra points of damage or an extra blocker if need be. Siege Gang Commander is an absolute game ender for this deck. At 5 mana it is a bit expensive, which is why we only run 3, but it does everything this deck needs to win a game. Not only does it give you 3 extra tokens for swinging in and dealing damage, but it also provides a built in win condition by giving you a sacrifice outlet for every goblin in your deck. Being able to pay 2 and sacrifice a goblin to shoot your opponent or your opponent's creature for 2 gives you a way of clearing the board or just straight up finishing off the opponent. This ability also gives you a way to profitably block by throwing a goblin in front of an attacking creature and then sacrificing it to the ability on Siege Gang Commander. The creature package here is perfect for beating up the opponent and spitting out tons of goblins, but with those out of the way, let's move to the spells package. 2 Shock, 2 Lightning Strike, and 4 Goblin Gathering make up the spells package for this deck. Shock and Lightning Strike are fantastic pieces of burn for a deck like this. Being instant speed and cheap means they are extremely flexible, and considering we will need to leave up mana for Siege Gang Commander activations, flexibility is highly important. Normally we would expect to see a bit more burn in a mono red deck, but with this deck focusing so much on playing creatures and tokens, it makes a lot of sense to slim down on them a bit. Not to mention we do have the built-in burn with Siege Gang Commander. Goblin Gathering is the only sorcery in this deck, but it's really perfect for goblins. For 3 mana you spit out 2 goblins plus another one for each goblin gathering in your graveyard. With 4 copies in total you can really produce a large number of goblins for only 3 mana. The first one is obviously just a worse goblin instigator, but everyone after that is just extra value. Again the spells package is pretty much what you'd expect. It isn't too surprising that we're cutting down on the burn spells for extra token generators since this is really a creature based deck and really we'd want to be slimming down on those anyway. This deck runs a total of 10 enchantments which is incredibly high for a mono red deck but actually makes a lot of sense in this case. 4 Cavalcade of Calamity, 4 The Flame of Keld, and 2 Experimental Frenzy make up the enchantment package. Cavalcade of Calamity is the namesake card in this deck and for good reason. This essentially doubles the damage output from all of your 1-1 creatures, and since we make tons of them with all of our token generators, this single card can end a game very quickly. What makes this card even better is that it triggers on attacks, not on damage. 
What that means is once you declare your attack, the Calamity will trigger before blocks are even declared, guaranteeing you deal a lot of damage to the opponent if you are attacking with a bunch of 1-1 creatures. This is key in this deck as it shortens the clock tremendously on the opponent and gives you a bonus out against opposing Planeswalkers as well. The Flame of Keld is a really interesting choice for this deck, but if timed properly, can oftentimes win you the game right out. During the first saga, you have to discard your hand, which will likely not be a large drawback as red decks tend to play most of their hand out very very early. On the second saga, this draws you two cards which can help you continue your onslaught. And finally on the third saga, every red spell gets a boost in damage to any player or permanent. That last saga can be huge as even just a few burn spells will likely be able to finish off the opponent very quickly. Not to mention this in tandem with the Calamity represents a ton of damage right off the bat. Finally we have Experimental Frenzy which is a card we are seeing more of in red decks pretty much everywhere. This card helps keep red decks in the game later on when they normally would have fizzled out. It's likely that by the time you play this you will have little to no cards left in your hand and with Skirk Prospectors out you can actually generate a large amount of mana to turbo out some of your goblins on top of your deck. This is only a 2 of in this list as you don't want it super early and we also have Flame of the Keld which does something similar and is also more of a game winning card. Normally we wouldn't see so many enchantments in a mono red deck, but in this case they all either win you the game, keep you going, or actually do both, so in that case they are really prime includes. Rounding out the deck we have a total of 23 mountains. Since we are a mono red deck we thankfully don't have to worry about a crazy land base. This is a bit high for your average red deck, but keep in mind we do have a lot of enchantments and high power goblins that we will need to play as quickly as possible. Before we move to the sideboard, I just want to mention that you should always tailor your sideboard to whatever meta you expect to be up against, either at your local FNM or just in your playgroup. Definitely make sure that you change this around based on the decks that you expect to see. Two Banefire, a card that gets out from under control decks extremely well and provides an extra out against high powered creatures. This also can just straight up win you the game in a lot of instances. Two Shock, having a couple extra pieces of burn is always welcome. In a fast creature matchup, you want to lower your curve, so sighting in a couple shocks allows you to accomplish that while adding ways to deal with the opponent's creatures. 3 Lava Coil, arguably a card that should be mainboarded depending on your meta. This card deals with so many powerful creatures in standard right now, so you will absolutely want access to these. 2 Sorcerer's Spyglass, this is sort of a catch-all against a lot of cards. I find that it's always helpful to have a couple just in case. 3 Fight with Fire, this is a card we see a lot of in sideboards. In slower matchups this can straight up just win the game since it has such a high damage output. 2 Experimental Frenzy, again this card is great at keeping red decks in the game. Having a couple extra copies for slower matchups just means that you never run out of gas. And finally 1 Siege Gang Commander, with this being such a key card for this deck it makes sense to have access to your fourth copy. Again, make sure to tailor your sideboard to whatever you expect to be up against. You always want to give yourself the best possible chance to win, and a sideboard can really make or break a match if you have the right cards for it. I hope you all enjoyed this standard budget deck tech of Goblin Calamity. I do think that this is pretty well positioned in the meta to be able to steal a few games, and only costing $50 means it's really easy to get your hands on. Thank you so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed this deck tech video please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and as always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content, but with that I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next deck tech video.